Get off your phone. I'm getting more. We're gonna do this every single time we start a video. This is the last one. I got 2,000 notes during that video. 20 minutes. Tumblr famous. Wow, nice. Okay, now. Maybe I am Tumblr famous. Okay. Hello, everyone, and this is my channel again. I'm Mason. I use I'm he, him, pronouns. Well, you know her. Um, you know me too, though, but I'm just gonna remind you. He, him, pronouns. Um, anyways, this is my April wrap-up. Um, I read significantly more books in April than I did in March. In fact, I quadrupled my number, I believe, but it wasn't that impressive yeah, since- did. It wasn't that impressive since March was three books. Um, but anyway, let's get started. So, the first book I read in- April was The Drawing of the Three by Stephen King. Um, in the last video, I talked about how I read The Gunslinger, um, and this is like a continuation of, well, obviously a continuation, but um, we go from like origin story of the quest um, into meeting some of the characters that are going to be with us throughout the series. Um, so I really like that part of it. Um, and it's, you know, they're really central to the story, um, and you get to watch them develop as a, as a warning. Um, it's written in a way where it's very Stephen King writing in the 80s is what I'm going to tell you, by which I mean it is not the most race, racially sensitive novel. There is, <laughs> there is a... To put it lightly. There is a black uh, female main character. Um, and who's also disabled. Who's also disabled. Um, and the way that Stephen King has her speak in this book is mess. it's it's like the most misunderstood and ill executed aave possible yeah um well he sometimes... also I, it's about it goes about how you would expect yeah you... so <laughs> i mean the racism isn't the center of it and i will let you know the racism is not the like this in the rest of the series um but... and the ableism i assume isn't either because he has some able he does do some ableist things not nearly as many as the racist things though yeah, um, it's not as egregious. But but anyway, if you can get past that, and I'm not saying you have to, and it's not my place to excuse it, but if you can get past it, it is a really good book in my opinion. Don't come for it. Um, I, I don't like it. I, you can check my something, my recent reads video or whatever. I didn't like it. Well, anyways, I've always loved this book. Um, I kind of treat it like it's actually the first book because the first one doesn't really do much. Um, and... Yeah, you start to develop bonds between the characters and get some camaraderie in there. Um, I gave this book 4.5 stars. 4.5 stars too high. The next, My next book is Misery by Stephen King because I love myself. Thank no. you, Selena. Um, so premise here is a, a writer gets into a bad accident in a snowstorm um, and he's severely injured. Um, and so a woman takes him in who claims to be his biggest fan. It's pretty clear as the book progresses that she is not mentally stable and probably not the best choice for a caretaker um and <laughs> to put it lightly so once again anyway the the driving plot of this is that um she read the most recent book he published um and didn't like it so it's holding him hostage until he rewrites it for her <laughs> um and trigger warning here um it is very gory and tortury. Um, if Violent. You can't, yeah, if you can't handle reading that stuff, stay away. But if you can get past all of that, it's it's really good. Um, it's very uh, very fast paced again. Uh, I think I read them like three days while I was reading like 17 other books. Um, so that should tell you that I liked it. Um, I gave it 4.75 stars. All right. <laughs> Next book I read uh, was the fourth book in the Flowers in the Attic series, uh, called Seeds of, Seeds of Yesterday by V.C. Andrews. Um, this one's back to the crazy. I mentioned in the last video that Petals in the Wind, no, which is the second if book. there be, oh. Petals in the Wind was super crazy, and then If There Be Thorns, it kind of dropped off a little bit. But this one, we are back to the crazy. Maybe not quite as much as the second book, um, but this one is full of, like, plot twists and, uh, drama and everything. Um, it's very good in a V.C. Andrews way, um, and it closed out the main portion of the series because the next book is, um, a prequel. prequel. Um, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about how the arc ended, um, but you should decide that for yourself because, and this book is absolutely unhinged. 
like the series is absolutely unhinged. So if you like unhinged things, it might be good. Yeah. What'd you give it? I gave it 3.5 stars. Okay. Um, then you're back on your nonfiction. I am back on my nonfiction. Um, this was a book recommended to my mom, uh, by a, uh, woman whose husband is a pastor and my mom recommended it to me um so it is love wins by rob bell um just to give you forewarning it is not about gay marriage even though it sounds like it um it's actually about um speculation on what happens in the afterlife and specifically about the constructs of heaven and hell and you know the christian religion um so this is a pastor writing it who his theory is that Heaven is going to be, isn't like a physical space. It's going to be like um, what happens to earth when everything's resolved, like that we will make a heaven on earth. And he also thinks that hell is not a real construct place where people go um, because he doesn't believe that a loving God uh, would condemn people for eternity. So it's a really interesting take on um, the Christian afterlife. I don't know exactly how I feel about it. Um, it's, I mean, it's pure speculation, both in that it's something we can never know and in that it's not super rooted in the text, like Christian texts, but it's an interesting philosophical discussion. Philosophical discussion. Yeah, I liked, I liked it a lot though. I, I enjoyed, um, I enjoyed the musings. So I gave it 4.5 stars. Um, my next book was Beautiful Chaos by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll. This is um, the third book, right? Yes, it's the third book in the Beautiful Creatures series. Um, and I've been re I've been rereading that um, and I actually recently finished it. It's a, it's a step up from the second book, which I thought was a little flat. Um, it, it The second book has new moon syndrome, like from Twilight, where the, it's, it's just it's one I want to forget about um mm -hmm. but basically overview the series and not the book since again I don't want to spoil the series um it's about a human guy who has a relationship with a castor girl which is basically a witch um and it the plot of the series is having um her figure out this like designation that casters get between um light and dark um and she's trying to like figure out how to um control that instead of letting fate control her so basically the um the series is like the repercussions of her um her actions in order to try to get autonomy it's a uh fun and comfortable reread for me yeah it's it's now it's mostly just nostalgic so i enjoy i enjoyed it but you know it's not it's not like it's the best book ever written but i give it 3.75 stars because 3. i like 3. 3.75 stars sorry because i like weird three. okay um, all right now for the next three books we are getting into a bit of a phase um, and this is what I call the Sylvia Plath phase. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to give a quick shout out to Allie, if you're watching this channel, that this is, uh, your fault. And I mean that in the best possible way. Um, Allie got me hooked on the possibility of reading Sylvia Plath when she wrote a play about Sylvia Plath, which was amazing. We got to go see it staged. Um, it was really good. But anyway, so I picked up at the library on Impulse a, uh, biography of Sylvia Plath called Red Comet by Heather Clark. Um, this thing is huge. It is 900 pages. No, it's, it, it is like 1200 pages full when I, you take all the notes into account. Um, the actual reading number is 937 pages. It took me a while to read it. Um, but I was in, I enjoyed that because she was such an interesting woman. Um, tell they, them who she is in case I, they don't know. I'm getting there. So she was one of the uh, most successful poets um, of the 20th century and definitely one of the most remembered female poets from the 20th century. Um, however, she had a history of severe mental health issues and a history of suicide attempts and she ultimately did die of a su suicide attempt. She's often remembered less of by her work and more by her um mental men issues yeah mental and, illness and heather clark the person who wrote this biography thinks that's totally unfair and you know i have to agree with her she has because it is yeah. yeah yeah i mean there's so much more to her than the end of her life um because during her life you know the 30 odd years she was around she did incredible things um and she was just so talented so i enjoyed reading this biography because it was really thorough um so I thought I thought the research was amazing um, and it got me interested in her art. Um, so I gave it 4.5 stars and then I immediately went and read some of her um, prose. 
I don't, Sylvia Plath's prose. Yes, Sylvia Plath's prose. I am not good with poetry, which is why I didn't try to get into that. I am really bad at understanding poetry. So I picked up um, her short story collection um, called Johnny Panic and the Bible of Dreams. Um, it's, it's, I don't know, I don't think she ever published it in her lifetime. I think it was collected posthumously. Um, and it was her short stories, some of her essays, some of her notebook entries. Um, and it was like basically one shots at life. And um, some of them were kind of surrealist, which I like because as Selena mentioned in either this video or the one before, uh, I like weird stuff. It was really interesting to read in like parallel while I was reading Red Comet because Sylvia Plath is very, very um, prone to um, making her works like almost autobiographical. And I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I think, you know, if you have experiences, draw from them. Um, so, yeah, I really enjoyed seeing like how her, um, the events of her life impacted her writing. And if we're, so I gave that one, um, you gave it 4.25. I gave it 4.25 stars. Um, and speaking, but, speaking of autobiographical, Sylvia Plath, I then read her, um, her novel, which is like very, her most famous, like her, would you say like her, like, what is the, like, like her landmark work probably that people, well, in terms of prose, it's. Uh, the Bell Jar, which is what I'm about to talk about in terms of poetry, it's probably Ariel or the Colossus. Yeah, this is the Bell Jar. It's a classic, so I'm sure many of you have heard of it. Heard of it, even if you don't know what it's about. Um, but basically, it's an autobiography that Sylvia Plath wrote but that's fictionalized. Um, she, the things that the main character goes through, almost exactly line up with stuff she did in real life. Um, so it's about her time at an internship, then her feelings upon coming home of depression. The main character also uh, goes through a suicide attempt. Um, so it was, again, fascinating to read while I'm reading Red Comet because it's just like, wow, this is, Sylvia Plath put a lot of herself into her work and I really respect that. Um, and I gave that one- Four stars. Four stars. If you oh, want to know about the vibe of this book, Mason has a really good way of yeah, I so I, apparently this is how it's been described by other people too, but I, I didn't know that. So I would like you to know that independently, I immediately thought this is the female Catcher in the Rye. Um, so that's a pretty popular opinion out there. So if you like Catcher in the Rye, go pick this up. If you don't because you don't like the coming of age, like angsty stuff, don't. Move along. Yeah. So the next book I uh, read is an, it's a nonfiction. I'm you know, getting back to the uh, Christian theme here, it's called The Year of Living Biblically by A.J. Jacobs. Um, it is a funny book, um, but it's about a guy who decides to live out every single law in the Bible for a year. Um, if you've never read the Bible, uh, the Old Testament itself, I believe he says, has 613 laws, which is a lot, and most of them are super specific. Um, so he's like, you know what? I, I need a book idea. I'm I'm an author. I need a book idea. So I'm just going to live live these out to the best of my ability in full for an entire year. Um see how it goes. And I'm, he really went for it. Like he was getting experts coming to his house to inspect with like a microscope the fibers in his clothing to make sure that the fabrics weren't mixed because that's something that you can't do in the Bible. Um, he had to know what how long or how how long the tree had, that his fruit came from had been alive and producing fruit because if there was a certain, it had to be a certain number um, of, years. For, of years so he could eat it, um, which uh, he didn't eat a lot of fruit that year because he couldn't figure out um, all that specifically. Um, and yeah, a lot of it has like funny tension with his wife um, because she she supports him but maybe not this project so much, especially since uh, in the Bible, men aren't allowed to be near women when they're unclean, which is menstruation. Period. Um, that's, that's, that's not good. That's not nice. I wouldn't be happy about that either. Well, she got her, she got back at him because you can't sit on a surface after a woman who's menstruating has sat on it. So she went and sat on every surface in the house while he was at work or yeah, while he was out so that he couldn't sit anywhere in the house. So he eventually had to buy this portable seat that he carried with him everywhere because he realized, I guess there are people on the bus who might be on their periods too. So anyways, dang, <laughs> he was committed, but she, she was That's also, good. I committed. would do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, anyway, I, like I said, it was funny. Um, and, and, and like 
informative too, but it was also inspiring, you know, like, I'm not going to follow the 613 laws of the Old Testament because I think I would not want to do that. Um, but it does give me reminders, you know, to live out in the more basic tenets of goodness, like being kind to people, not to lie so much, not to think, like, disparage people so much, either verbally or mentally. Um, you know, it's just, it has lessons that we could all could learn, whether religious or not. Um, I gave that one five stars. Okay, and then you have three more. Next one is Beautiful Redemption, which is the last book in the Beautiful Creatures series. Um, and once again, it's by Cam Cammy Garcia and Margaret Stoll. Yeah, I can't say much about it again because it's a series, but I will say that I think it's the best of the series. Um, and it wraps up all the plot lines well. Um, I think it has a really interesting take on the YA genre and does some tropes, like subverts them in a way we don't really see in most YA. Um, so I thought it was cool. I I gave that one those cool. four stars, yeah. And then you have your two five stars, two more five stars of the month. Which yep. I have read and liked as well. Yep. Uh, so the first one is Star Sight by Brandon Sanderson. And what have we got here but another sequel? This one to this um, book Skyward. Um, so it's a continuation of that, um, but it's a fresh take on the ongoing series, like, direction, you know? Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I love Spensa. She's funny. I love Mbot. He's funny. It's funny while still being action. Yeah, it's funny. Very yeah. plot funny, twisty. Funny, action-packed. Yeah, plot twisty. It, good book. Classic Sanderson, really. Yeah, um, and, and as Lena said, five stars. And then your final thing is possibly your favorite book of the year, right? And I'm so it, thrilled it, it about could, it. It could be. I'd probably show this has rocketed up to my second favorite book of all time position. Oh, okay. Okay. Wait, more than more than boyfriend material? Yeah. Yeah, we've already talked and about And then but not more than Red, White, and World Blue and Peter Darling. No, those are both first place. Oh. Okay. Anyway. Um and so anyways, this it, did you already say what the book was? No. Okay. This is the Atlas Six by Olivy, is that right? I would say Olive E. Blake. Ol Olive E. Blake. Um, so it is about a society that is preserving the Library of Alexandra magically. Basically, there are six people, like the highest of their ma magical uh, power, the highest of their magical categories, I guess. Um, they pick six In people, their generation. Yeah, yeah, in their generation. They pick six of them to go through basically this year-long internship, and five will get inducted. Um, so obviously when there's one person who's going to have to be eliminated, some of these character relationships are shifting and alliances Hence. are being made. Um, but that means that uh, you have to have really well, really well written character dynamics and Olive e. Blake does. Um, and I absolutely adored the way the characters were written. And I actually think that most of them are likable, which is hard to do in a book like this. I mean, there's some that aren't, but... Um, there's only really one and, who I think was yeah, like not likable at all. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, there's also like, I was not expecting this at all, but there's like metaphysical stuff. And I believe I've mentioned a thousand times on this channel. I am not a physicist, but God, do I wish I were good enough at math to be one. Um, because I love like theoretical explain to dummies physics. So the fact that this one had like stuff about like Time and, time and time and space and, and dimensions space. i was like all right somebody wrote and this book specifically for me yeah and it's rooted in the magic yeah yep um so anyways it's all my interest in one book um like i said great great characters um i like the dark academia setting which i didn't even know is my genre until now um i will say there are um two pretty in-depth sex scenes so if you're not comfortable with that be warned however they are sex scenes done in a way I've never seen before. The first one um, really is like developing plot during it, which, you know, that it's going to sound weird when I say that, but the way it's written juxtaposed with like other things going on, Oops, yes. um, it's, you get plot development during a sex scene. Mm -hmm. they, they aren't, stop it. <laughs> I'm telling him to hurry it up. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not like they are badly written either. They're, they're, both good sex scenes and this one's good at develop developing the plot and then the next one it develops the character relationships during the sex scene like in more ways than just they had sex okay so anyways love that book you love the writing i did love the writing who's your favorite character <laughs> don't do that noise uh-uh do i have to pick yes pick one mm, libby 
Libby? Yeah. Oh, God. Um, I see myself in her. <laughs> oh, you would. You yeah. would, though. Anyways, you totally would. Anyways, if we didn't already say that, that was five stars. But I think yep. that could be surmised from what I said. Also, by the way, you said it. So it does have active dark academia. But honestly, it's nothing like the true genre of dark academia. Because it's fantasy. You like, I think you would probably like fantasy dark academia. Anyways, there is one coming out that I think you should read because I think it will be similar in that. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for watching Mason's April wrap up. And I'll say goodbye. You know, I am capable of waving my own no, hand. No, you're not. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>